I think with this album, we just kind of wanted to make an album that we liked, you know, something that was for ourselves and something that was honest and, you know, without having an eye on what's going on in anywhere else in the world in any other kind of music, just to do something that we were happy with and we are, so. We we'll await and see if the rest of the world agrees. <laughs> I like the title Some Other Country because it's ambiguous and you can, everybody will take something different from it and I mean, for me it's, it's being English but living in France, I'm kind of, it's, I'm, in, I'm in some other country but I'm, I feel almost more part of France than I do of England now. When I go back to England it's like some other country and yeah. we travel a lot, you know, well David particularly travels a lot, he's always somewhere else, every time I phone him up he's like, oh I'm in Brazil and I'm like, oh what the fuck are you doing there, you know. The other sort of reference to some other country is the fact that I need to get out of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live so somewhere else. Some other country. James lives somewhere else. He lives in Montpellier. Francesco, who we work with, lives in Bologna. Richard Davis, who we work with, lives in Berlin. But he's English. Cassie lives in Berlin. But she's Austrian. where's she from? Austria. Austria. And, and half. She's a bit English too. Yeah. Right? So you know, my my next plan is probably to move to Berlin, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I think we should start our own country, really. Yeah, kind of yeah. Land. If we had our own country, we could have our own soccer team, yeah. our own Olympic team. Our own stamps. Uh, stamps, money, and uh, all it. night licensing laws. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get it straight now. No sad goodbyes. I betrayed myself again. No sad. Richard Davis was staying in my house in London uh, with his girlfriend and uh, they were going to the snooker tournament in North London because she wants to paint snooker players, which is, you know, quite interesting subject matter. Not many people paint snooker players. Unfortunately, Astrid's father died while we were kind of working on some tracks from the album and uh, Richard came up with these lyrics, which I, I personally think are connected to that in some way. Um, but I could be wrong, but it certainly brought the emotion out of it in, within him, which I think we were struggling to do before that. He did a, he did a good job, didn't he? Uh, uh, he took the, the track in a completely different direction that I never expected. I, I, often when you work with vocalists, that's what we try to get, is to have, you send them something which you've kind of been working on and you've got your own ideas of it, and then it comes back and there's a song suddenly, and it's like, whoa, where did this come from? And they've we, we give them complete liberty, we, can, we say you write about whatever you like, you sing what you like, you record it at home, and in doing that, it doesn't always work, but when it does work, I think you get something really strong. A, a lot of vocalists have um, said that they like working with us because we don't put any pressure on them to, to perform in a specific way, whereas, you know, a lot of these producers, um, you know, they just... They do Her word by word. And they harass people, and, yeah, yeah, they harass people into a performance and okay, it might sound, it might sound amazing at, at the end of the day, but you know, I, I think a lot of the time that would lack emotion for me. I mean, every, every, records, so. everyone we've worked with uh, vocally, it's always been uh, quite emotional, yeah. lyrically and... Um, and completely natural, you know, yeah. just like do what you want to do, say what you want to say. And, some people, I think, that scares them slightly. They don't know what to do. But, no, it's good. Ooh, I never knew this all. This all meant something to you. Don't you know by showing all your soul? That track chose itself to be a single. <laughs> it phoned us up and said, hello, I'd like to be a single. 
<laughs> Smile and Receive was made basically when once we got in touch with Cassie and she said that she wanted to do something. It was a track that I did at home in one day, from start to finish, completely live. Didn't even use a mixing desk, just sampler plugged into a drum machine and made a track. Sent it to her that night, and she about a week later came back with this killer vocal. And simple as that. It was one of those ones that just came together really, really fast. And you know, we wanted, we couldn't, we couldn't go back and fiddle with it because it was just a stereo track with a vocal on top. So it was like, okay. there was no need. To. It's done. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it, it pretty much perfect as it was. I mean, it was, you know, you could go back, and you could, you could try and improve on it but like we just asked some people to remix it and so you know some of those people were like oh no, no it's perfect as it is there's no point in remixing it so. i think i think a lot of the best music is music that's made quickly and just like cut you know and then it's something it's a document of how you felt on that day and and, and somehow we we're lucky we shouldn't be lucky with yeah cassie some something within her really came out in that track and mm. i hadn't heard her sing like that before <laughs> We've got some gigs planned for this album. Many, we've got a few mini tours. Yeah, we're doing, you know, major European capital cities. I think, I we, think go, we go and play where we like to play, where there's people we like. We're trying to involve people that we work with, we've worked with for a while as well to get them on the bill and sort of have a night in a club where we get bring in our own kind of crew, as it were. Um, I think I think the day, days of, of of touring as a as a band. Are, are kind of gone because you know it generally you play on a Friday and a Saturday night in a club and that's it. So you, there's no point in going on tour because you've got you've got another five days. You've got nothing to do. <laughs> Spend all your wages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can sit in a hotel for five days. So I mean, a tour for us is yeah, we'll, pl we'll play four dates in Italy or four dates in Spain or four dates in France, whatever. That's that's a tour for us, you know. For our, we're, we're working on a few an parties for our anniversary. Um, I mean, you know, we don't, we're not really that sort of. It's not that important, really. No, no it's, just all that. it's like birthdays. You know, it's quite fun. So it's, it's a good excuse to have a party with all our mates. So we're we'll do one in London, yeah. Paris, Berlin. Um, not sure about anywhere else. And that's it from moment. Yeah, maybe, maybe Barcelona at some point, maybe. Oh, I got an air raid going. Yeah, on. no, it's mm. lunchtime. It's uh, every every Wednesday in France at midday. Yeah. Uh, first Wednesday of the month, the the, the firemen blow their whistle. Yeah. And the fire alarm. Why? Just to try them. Yeah. Because yeah. they've got a button, a big red button, yeah. and they sit all month waiting. <laughs> yes. I was thinking it's the anniversary of D-Day, so I thought maybe there was an invasion happening. <laughs> it's mainly to scare young children. Uh, right? so. Um, this would be a great end for the interview. Yeah. Oh, right Siren. Out. <laughs> Bombs coming down. The Russians have attacked. Album number five, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Time has imposed a fate upon us. Time has imposed a fate upon us. Time has imposed a fate upon us. Time has imposed a fate upon us.